Hey, what's up guys? Uh, finally getting a chance to, to make this video as, I, um, as we discussed a few weeks ago. Something that's been on my heart to get done um, because I believe in striking while the iron's hot, so to speak. Um, so I'm out here in line, about to pick up my high schooler. Thought I'd make this video now. And no scripts, you know, I ain't get all made up, <laughs> right? This is O'Neal, you know, every day. Uh, so I'm going to speak to you from my heart. And I'm speaking to my Sands. I'm speaking to my fraternity brothers versus anyone else. Um, you guys know me. Uh, we go back over 20 years. Um, so I'm just going to speak to you from my heart and talk about, um, you know, well, how, I, how I came to, to become a Christian and what that means to me and how important that is to me. So hopefully you get something out of this. Um, so how did I get saved? Well, first of all, and I'm going to try to make this video pretty sh uh, fairly short. So I'm going to try to do it uh, as expeditiously as possible, uh, not make a 20 minute video. So just keep that in mind. Um, so how did I get saved? And that's, you know, that word is a very important word. <clears throat> uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Paul said that Jesus came into this uh, world to save sinners. All right. So those are words that uh, that Paul recorded in the scriptures. And so uh, he didn't shy away from those words. And so I won't either. Um, so I got saved in 1997. OK, and I'll tell you what that means, what that meant to me and how that happened. Um, and again, these are going to be things that you guys can relate to because I got saved on North Street. You guys remember that one bedroom apartment that I had? It was just me and Zuri, right? Um, you guys have been in that apartment many times. It's right after I moved out uh, from Linden Street, uh, you know, with Billy and, and Kurt and Peterson. Uh, my senior year at Ball State. Um, you know, but growing up, I had... Uh, heard about Christ, you know, went to church with my aunt. Um, but at the end of the day, Christianity and who Jesus really was didn't resonate to, to me. And you say, well, why, why, why do you say that? You know, uh, you, you went to church. Uh, why do you say Jesus didn't resonate with you? Because it didn't, it, because it wasn't reflective in my life. You know, uh, you know, my lifestyle my life's choices wasn't didn't reflect or mirror what it means to be a Christian, a Christian, according to the scripture. Now, um, So I grew up, you know, hearing about Christ, having a head knowledge of, about Christ. But in 1997, I got a heart knowledge about Christ. And that's what I want to tell you about. Um, so I had some I had some I had some vices that I developed even before college. Uh, remember, I started drinking alcohol at the age of 14 years old. I grew up around alcohol. My father actually passed away from alcoholism in 2010. You know, we believe he um, suffocated, you know, passed out and suffocated. Um, alcohol poisoning and everything else. Uh, so I grew, up, I grew up around that. Started again, like I said, at 14. I had my first beer, Schlitz malt liquor beer. I remember it to this day. Um, and I never stopped. So when you guys met me at Ball State uh, and you know what we did and how we did it, that was life to me, you know, and I enjoyed that. You know, I did what sinners do. We enjoy the lust of the eye, the, the you know, the pride of life. Um, so I'm not saying that I wasn't doing anything that um, the natural man didn't desire to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was a vice um, that I had. And so, um, you know, the drinking and, the, you know, the fornication and the lust and all these things, uh, I was dealing with, you know, when I was at Ball State, uh, not to mention the fact that, you know, uh, the other illegal things that I was doing, <laughs> you know, uh, selling marijuana. I won't even go there in terms of some of the things that I got myself into that you guys probably don't even know about. Um, and my parents surely didn't know about it. Um, but I remember in 1997, it was the winter of 1997. It's my last year. Again, I moved by myself, trying to buckle down, make the dean's list, stuff like that. Um, and I remember, man, that the fear of death hit me, right? As I mentioned, partying, smoking, drinking, uh, you know, fornicating, all these things. Somehow, the Lord got a hold of my heart. His spirit convicted my heart 
about 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 sin. More specifically, convicted my heart about where I would go if I died. I'm talking about hell. I remember tossing and turning, um, you know, throughout the night because this fear of dying and going to hell gripped me and I couldn't sleep. And I remember, man, getting on my knees and telling this Lord, this Jesus that I had heard about, um, telling him that I'm sorry. And I asked him for forgiveness of my sin. And I asked him to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Um, again, things that I had heard, but that night the Lord got a hold of my heart. And uh, from that point on, uh, I remember going to a church. I can't remember the name of the church. Uh, me and a friend of mine. And I remember telling that pastor what had happened to me in terms of the conviction of my heart and the fact that I had got saved. Remember, I wasn't in a church. I didn't go to church. I didn't go up and take the preacher's hand and say, hey, I want to. No, I the Lord got a hold of my heart, convicted me of my sin that night. And I cried out to him and him alone. That's what I did. And, um, you know, I subsequently, like I said, I subsequently went to a church uh, because I felt like I needed to be baptized. And actually, that's scripture. You know, every believer in the Bible first believed and then he went and got baptized. And that's the order that it happens. Um, so from 1997, I like to say that's when the Lord started to do a work in my life from the inside out. Um, but I still had struggles because, as you can recall, all of my friends and associates, right, you know, they were doing something different than what I was trying to do. So for six months, I tried to not drink. I remember actually Stu had moved into an apartment right uh, next door. And I remember going over to his house, his apartment and folks drinking. And I think we were even pledging a line or something like that and trying to you know, trying to just be different, trying to live differently, you know, and I did my best, but at the end of the day, uh, I couldn't do it myself. And so after six months, I fell back into the same vices. And here's why I didn't have anyone to tell me what it meant to be a Christian. I didn't tell anyone to tell me that in order to not fumble and stumble in this life, you better be connected. You better be connected to the word of God. First, you better be connected to the body of Christ. Secondly, um, because that's the only way you're going to grow and be able to, um, you know, really not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, and that's an everyday thing. That's what the sanctification process is about. So six months I was on fire, you know, um, trying to do my best to live this life. But then I remember very vividly that I fell back into sin. Um, and I remember, again, I'm still in 1997, the winter of 1997. I remember after falling back into sin one night, I remember getting on my knees again and telling the Lord, I remember these words as if it was yesterday. Lord, don't give up on me. And that's what I said. Don't give up on me. Um, and from that moment on, like I said, the Lord started to do a work from the inside out. Um, I remember having struggles with drinking and hiding alcohol after that fact and, you know, just having to give it over to the Lord and tell him to help me. And he did that. And so fast forward from then till now, again, I, I said I wanted to keep this video fairly short. Um, the sanctification process has been transpiring ever since. And that's what happens in the life of the believer. You know, a believer doesn't live perfectly. A believer can live victoriously, um, but it all is dependent on Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that comes and indwells the believer once you come to repentance and accept Christ. So um, that's the journey I've been on ever since that ever since that day. And I tell you what, I don't argue about the Bible. I don't I witness. You know, I tell people about Christ, um, but I don't argue because no one can persuade me 
that Jesus Christ isn't real. No one can persuade me of that. You know, I talk to Muslims. I talk to Jehovah Witnesses. I talk to Seventh Day Adventists. No one can persuade me that this Jesus that I believe in, this Jesus that I love, no one can persuade me that he's not real because he's changed my life. Right. And then when I read the scripture, it verifies that everything that I have experienced is true. Because when you look at the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul persecuted Christians. Then the Lord got a hold of his heart and he ended up being beheaded for this cause of Christ. So uh, my message to you is simple. Do you know him? Not have you been baptized, not are you a member of a church, not do you go to church sun every Sunday, not do you go to church and, and Bible study. The question is, do you know Jesus? Because the Bible was clear on two very important things. One, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. Look at the signs of the times. Look at our world. I'll leave it there. He is coming back. Are you ready? Two, he says, in that day, and I believe this is the scripture verse that I gave you to look at in Matthew. Here's what he says. In that day, many people are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't I cast out many demons in your name? Done many wonderful works in your name? And Jesus Christ will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. The fact of the matter is, do you know Jesus? The question is, do you know Jesus or do you not know him? Have you repented of your sins or do you just profess that you're a Christian? That's very important. Don't let another minute, another second go by without getting this business taken care of. And it happens, as the Bible says, if you look in the book of Romans chapter 10, verses nine, verse 9 and 10, and I'm going to leave you with this. Jesus says in these verses, written through Paul, If thou shalt confess with his mouth, or her mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that, Christ, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you shall be saved. But here's the kicker. Verse 10 says, with the heart, right here, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So first, believe in your heart that Christ died for you. Not your neighbor, not your friend, not your wife, not your son or daughter, but for you. Then, tell somebody about it. Okay. Then, start to grow and mature in Christ so that the Lord can use your life for his glory. That's what he wants to do. I hope this message uh, helps you. I say it for no other reason, but because I love you and I want you to be there in that day that the Lord returns. And I want your testimony to be as if, as, as I want my testimony to be. And I want to hear these words from my, more, my Lord and Savior. Well done, my good and faithful servant. If you have any questions about this life or death decision, call me, text me, uh, and I'll drop everything to help you. Take care. Hope this helps.